Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be driving this M4 Competition X-Drive convertible. The M4 convertible is only available as a competition trim in X-Drive, so all-wheel drive, and with the ZF 8-speed automatic gearbox in this country. They start at £83,500, which is roughly £3,500 more than an M4 Competition Coupe X-Drive. But this particular car, being a press car, well, it has the ultimate package on it, which is 11 and a half grand, bringing the retail of this car up to 95 grand. In fact, the only option that I can see that's missing is the 8,000 pound carbon ceramic brake option. BMW have gone back to the soft top fabric convertible with this very latest uh, G83, which I think is a good thing. I've never been the biggest fan of hard top convertibles. Sure, when the roof is on, you maybe get a bit more insulation and sound deadening, but they just look ugly when the roof is up. Whereas I think the fabric roofs look really good when they're up and obviously very good when they're down, especially when the sun is shining. That roof folds in 18 seconds apparently and up to speeds of 30 miles an hour. I've never been the biggest convertible fanboy, especially on sports cars like this M4. You see, removing the roof removes a lot of the chassis stiffness. So BMW then need to work on the lower bit of the chassis to stiffen the car back up again, and that adds a lot of weight. This car actually weighs about 150 kilos more than an equivalent M4 Competition X-Drive Coupe. What it can also do is raise the H point, so the part of the chassis where the seats are bolted onto. I go on about driving position a lot in my videos because I'm tall and I'm hoping that they haven't ruined that brilliant driving position with those optional carbon bucket seats. We'll jump in and find that out shortly. Under the bonnet, we find the very familiar S58 engine, three litre inline six twin turbo, produces 510 horsepower, 650 newton meters of torque, exactly the same engine and figures that we find in my M3 competition. That is mated to the ZF eight speed automatic gearbox, which is the only option on this car or any new M3 and M4 sold in the UK. And all of that power and torque is fed to the ground through BMW's MX Drive system. The same system that was in that M3 competition X Drive I had recently on the channel. So it's switchable. You can decouple the front axle altogether, making it a rear wheel drive car. Due to its weight increase, this car has a claimed 0 to 62 figure of 3.7 seconds. That's two tenths of a second slower than the M4 competition coupe X Drive but I'm sure you agree anything sub four is quick enough, especially for something that has the roof off. Jumping inside, well, the first thing I have to talk about is the driving position and the fact that BMW have nailed it once again. I don't know if it's just the combination of the fact that this car has the carbon buckets, but I'm sitting here really low. And in fact, it's probably the first convertible I've sat in where I feel like I'm looking through the middle of the windscreen and not across the top of the actual windscreen frame, which I tend to in most convertibles. So that's really exciting. In fact, it feels every bit as good in here as my M3 and the M4 Coupe. So well done to BMW for getting that right. Otherwise, everything in here, well, aside from the fact that the roof is missing, it seems very similar. The rear bench is even tighter for space compared to the M4 Coupe, so really, smaller kids or teenagers at a pushback there and the boot is obviously massively compromised because of the folding soft top but everything else in here feels like it's identical aside from the button down here that operates the roof right let's get it out on the road Spent the past half hour in this car getting to one of my favorite roads in the area so i'm learning more things about it something i picked up on is the fact that it does feel only slightly slower than the m3 or m4 coupe now you would expect that with that fairly substantial 150 kilo weight gain <laughs> 
And it is hard to justify and understand that you're driving around in a four series that weighs nearly two tons. I mean, that's a lot of weight. In fact, with me on board and my camera gear, we're probably looking at two tons. That's not to say it's slow though. As we talked about on the outside, well, it has a claimed 0-62 figure of just 3.7 seconds, which is very, very fast. In fact, we'll demonstrate that now. And there we go. I mean, you don't need your road car to be any quicker than that. Once we get to some good twisties, we'll be able to talk more about its handling characteristics and whether it feels any different due to its weight gains. But what I can tell you on the move now and in the time that I've spent in this car is that it does still suffer from a bit of scuttle shake. And that's basically the slight lack of chassis stiffness compared to the coupe. And what that feels like is, well, on older convertibles, it was really bad. So in something like an E46 M3, well, the steering wheel felt like it was connected to a totally different part of the car or the chassis to the seat. There's a real disconnection, if you like, in older convertibles, like the steering wheel would move around what felt like inches, but was obviously only probably millimeters. And in this very latest G83, well, I can still feel that happening. I can feel the wheel wobbles around a bit more than it does in the M3 and M4. Not worryingly so, and if you just jumped in this car in isolation and not out of your M3 like I did this morning, you probably wouldn't notice it as much. But I can definitely notice that there is a slight disconnection between the steering wheel itself and where I'm sitting. The other thing you've got to worry about in convertibles is buffeting. So, you know, when you put your window down in your saloon or your estate, or your normal car, let's call them, and you get that horrible buffeting sound. Well, again, convertibles are old. You'd kind of get that. And you used to have to have a wind deflector on the back seats or on the back shelf there. But this car doesn't have one. There's a button down here that is very handy. It opens and closes all of the four windows uh, at once, so you don't have to do them individually. And when they're up, actually at reasonable speeds, so we're doing 30 now and hopefully you can hear me very clearly, but at slower speeds, it's very, very good. I've been on the motorway to get here, or dual carriageway, and I was doing 70 miles an hour. At those speeds, mm, it's questionable. <laughs> it's a completely different experience to what it would be in a coupe or in my M3. And I think that's what convertibles are all about. They're about sort of giving you that open air experience. You almost feel like you're out in the countryside when you're on these beautiful roads. You can hear the birds, you can hear more of what's going on underneath. You can hear more of the tires and the exhaust. So you really are exposed to the elements a bit more in a convertible, but that's probably stating the obvious. Right, let's put it in my M1 preset button, which gives me an aggressive throttle, slightly stiffer chassis, better brakes, traction off, and four-wheel drive sport. So it sends more power and torque to the rear axle, which is my go-to setting in these MX Drive cars. As the wind picks up, I really hope that you can hear me. <laughs> Again, I can feel that scuttle shake through the wheel. I think that would start to bother me on longer drives or during ownership of this car, but I guess people that are gonna buy an M4 convertible have probably had a convertible prior to this, and so they're used to that scuttle shake, and it probably won't offend them or upset them as much as it does with me. I think it's only because I know how stiff and good the coupe chassis is in this car. It's mighty, but we're soon about to find out what this car's like when you start turning it into some, let's say, tighter twisties. It cruises really good. The ride quality feels pretty much every bit as good as the coupe version. 
gearbox and all that's just as good. You can hear more exhaust even at 50, 60 miles an hour, you can hear that exhaust, which is really good because obviously these modern cars are very muted due to very strict regulations. So turning it in for the first time, well, I mean, it feels great, but it does feel heavier. And even coming out of there, it feels a little bit more, let's say, lethargic compared to the coupe or um, an M3. You can feel that weight. There's no way of disguising that weight. I think the MX Drive setup and the ZF 8 speed gearbox really suit this car because the sort of person that's going to be buying an M4 convertible is not going to be tracking it. They're not going to be absolutely caning this car. They're buying it as a, let's say, nice luxury GT car. And on that topic, well, where does that leave the M8 convertible? I mean, you think these are expensive at 83 and a half grand base. Well, the M8 convertible is about 125 grand, I believe, off the top of my head. It's definitely not, let's say, 40 grand better than this car. In fact, I don't think it's really better in any ways except for the 4.4 litre V8, but that adds more weight and obviously adds a lot more thirst along with it. So, yeah, if you're looking at an M8 convertible, this car's almost a bargain. this car is because it has the MX drive set up you can decouple the front axle and it then becomes a rear wheel driven car so and in a convertible well that's lots of fun <laughs> I guess I need to come up with some kind of conclusion after this very brief first drive in the M4 competition X-Drive convertible. <laughs> well, in isolation, it's a really good car. I mean, aside from the scuttle shake that I've talked about several times now, it's a really nice convertible. It's very comfortable, it's a good driving position. You've got all the tech in here that you could ever want. I think it arguably looks pretty good, especially with the roof down. And it goes very fast. I mean, 0-62 in, 3.7 seconds well that's very very quick so in isolation it's a great car but as always with me I look at M car convertibles and I just think that they've been slightly ruined this has got too much weight now it doesn't have the chassis that the coupe has and it is definitely a compromise compared to the coupe or compared to my M3 Would I consider one of these cars? Personally, I wouldn't because convertibles don't do it for me. But if I won the lottery tomorrow and I had a house in the south of Spain and a big 10 car garage, then I probably would have one of these in the garage because on a beautiful summer's day, driving along the coast or through the mountains, this car would be really, really cool. And it would open you out to some different elements compared to what you'd be like in a hard top version. There's no denying that this is a really different experience in terms of, well, not wind going through my hair because I have no hair and I've got a hat on, but it does give you this sort of outdoors experience that a coupe or my M3 would never give you and couldn't give you. So, you know, it swings and roundabouts, but I think the main thing is that once again, having a convertible is a compromise and thankfully not so much in the driving position but in terms of weight penalties and chassis stiffness well yeah you do lose some let's just enjoy this last bit of road here and talk you through what i'm feeling so fourth gear now we're coming in here brakes are really good fantastic front end same 275 section front tires down through here second because we're in x drive i mean it lays down power, no worries, as you can imagine in a car like this on PS4S's with the X-Drive system, 
You do hear some nice little burbles on the exhaust when you change down gears, which you don't hear in the hardtop version. So that is another advantage of driving the convertible, if you like. I'm gonna leave it there, guys, because I've got to get this car back. I only had it for 90 minutes, so hopefully this video is okay. Thanks a lot for watching, as always. Uh, I will see you at the next one very, very soon. Cheers. Something else I forgot to talk about is what this car is like with the roof up. And I have to say, it's really pleasant. It does a great job of insulating me from the outside world and elements. There are a couple of rattles coming from the back there somewhere that I couldn't hear when the roof was down. I'm guessing that might be the folding mechanism. And there's also a small little squeak or squeal from the window here. And I think it's where it meets the uh, window seal itself but I'm just nitpicking. They're very small sounds and only things that I'd pick up on being an M3 saloon owner, if you like. In terms of vision out the back, well actually, although it's not excellent, it's very good, especially compared to many other convertibles out there. I can see everything that's going on behind me and there's even some heating elements in that small piece of glass. So on a frosty morning, you can defrost that window. So yeah, roof up, it does a very good job of feeling like a normal car or an M4 coupe if you like. Right, that is it now, I'm signing off. Cheers for watching.